All right, and now for the 2020 10A, problem number 11, which was also the 12A, problem 8. What is the median of the following list of 4,040 numbers? You have 1 to 2,020, followed by all the squares from 1 to 2,020 squared. So uh, how do we approach this? Think of it like a big sequence. And if we want the... Uh, the median of the first 4,040, we're going to want a sub 2,020 the, plus the 2,021st term divided by 2. Okay, because that will be right in the middle of the two middle terms. So how are we going to get that? Um, if, if we take the first 2,020 terms, there's obviously 2,020 of them. How many of these perfect squares, though, are actually before 2,020? Well, at a quick calculation, 45 squared is 2025. There is a trick to numbers that end in 5 when you square them, by the way. All you do is take the tens digit, multiply it by the number after it in the number line. So 4 times 5 is 20, and then you throw 25 on the end. Real quick example, 20, uh, 35 squared would be 3 times 4 is 12 with 25. Continuing on, 45 squared equals 2025. That's going to be a little too big, but 44 squared, uh, which is 89 less than this. So I can subtract 100 to 1925 and add 11 to get 1936 for 44 squared. So then, uh, this number is less than 2020. So when we get to the number 1936, what term number will we be on in our sequence? Um, well, you're going to have all of the 1936 integers from 1 to 1936, plus you're going to have 44 perfect squares, which match up with several of these numbers. So if I add 44, I'm going to get 1980 as my term number. Okay, so now we're at term number 1980. We need to get to term number 2020, which means we have to add 40. And we're at 1936, so when we add 40, we get 1976. The next number being 1977, and that takes us to answer choice C. Okay, and continuing on with the 2020 AMC 10A, problem number 12. Uh, triangle AMC is isosceles with AM equal to AC. Medians MV and CU are perpendicular to each other. Um, MV is 12 and CU is 12. What is the area of AMC? Um, there are several things that you can do in this problem. I think for me, uh, what I want to do is because these are medians, you want to just connect U to V because that will be then parallel, because these are midpoints. When you connect the midpoints of a triangle, it's called the mid-segment. And the ratio of UV to MC will be 1 to 2. Uh, because it's 1 to 2, the ratio of AUV to AMC is 1 to 4, based on similarity. Um, uh, all lengths and similar shapes are A to B, and all areas are A squared to B squared then we can just say that the area of AUV is equal to X, and the area of the trapezoid is equal to 3X, because X plus 3X is 4X for the whole thing. Okay, now, at that point, we have down here a, tra a trapezoid that is a what we call an orthodiagonal. Orthodiagonal. And orthodiagonals have a property for their area that their area is just half the product of the diagonals. So you can do half times D1 times D2, and since both of our diagonals are 12, this comes out to 72, which means 3x is 72, one-third of which is 24, and then you will add 24 here. The whole thing will then have area 96. Continuing on with the 2020 10A problem 13, which was also the 12A problem 11. A frog sitting at the point 1, 2 begins a sequence of jumps, where each jump is parallel to one of the coordinate axes and has length 1, 
and the direction of each jump, up, down, right, or left, is chosen independently at random. The sequence ends when the frog reaches a si side of the square with vertices 0, 0, 0, 4, 4, 4, and 4, 0. What is the probability that the sequence of jumps ends on a vertical side of the square? Okay, uh, to get started, just uh, kind of draw what's happening. You're at the point 1, 2. He's right here. The square is made up of 0, 0, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, and 4, 4 up here. And it looks like this. And the frog's going to stop when it reaches the side of the square. So if you think about it, let's use a starting point. He can go here, 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 and here, inside the square. Those are his available moves inside the square. Okay, so from the jump, right, he has a 1 in 4 chance of getting to a vertical side. So start with that, 1 fourth plus. All right, now, he could jump to the top or the bottom, here or here, these two positions actually have an equal chance from them of reaching the top or the side. Why? Because from this spot here, there's a 1 in 4 chance he goes up, and there's a 1 in 4 chance he goes to the left. Plus, there's a 1 in 4 chance he moves to this position, which is an advantage for landing on the top, but there's also a 1 in 4 chance he returns back to his original position, which gives the advantage that he would jump to the left before he gets to the top. And so these two are advantaged points, if you will, for the top and sides respectively. He has an equal chance of going to each one, plus an equal chance of going straight to the top of the side. Therefore, from this position and this position, the chance of him reaching the vertical sides versus the bottom or top are both one half. Then, what about this middle position here? If he goes to the middle position uh, with his first jump, then there's an equal chance he gets to any of the sides. I mean, it, it's obvious, right? So half, one half chance from there as well. Therefore, the rest of this is simply the three-fourths chance that he doesn't go directly to his left times one half. And we just can add this up. Two-eighths plus three-eighths is... Okay, and on to the 2020 10A, problem number 14. Real numbers x and y satisfy x plus y equals 4 and x times y is negative 2. What is the value of this? Uh, this problem basically is, well, you'll see. Uh, first, just take the x and y and combine them because their x plus y is 4. So now you're going to have 4 plus, and then group these two together. You might as well combine them because they don't look great right now. x squared up to x cubed is x to the fifth. y squared up to y cubed is y to the fifth. And the bottom is x squared y squared. Now we know what x squared y squared is. It's 4 because we're just squaring negative 2. So we have 4 plus x to the fifth plus y to the fifth over 4. All we need now is the x to the fifth, y to the fifth. And as I was saying, this is basically straight out of Volume 1. If you did Volume 1 in its entirety, there were several questions just like this, and we're going to handle it much similarly. We're going to start with x plus y equals 4, and we're going to square it. So x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals 16. And then we are going to take the xy and replace it. Negative 2 plugged in becomes negative 4. We'll add 4 to both sides to get x squared plus y squared equals 20. From this point, there's actually two options. You could square this again to create x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, and then use the x plus y. Um, the other option is that we can do x cubed plus y cubed and just cube the original expression. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the x cubed plus y cubed. So you get uh, x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed is equal to 4 cubed, which is 64. Next, we've got 3x squared y and 3xy squared. It's going to be 3xy times y plus x. Just by grouping these two middle terms and factoring only out of them, ignoring the x cubed and y cubed. And the reason for that is we want the x cubed plus y cubed and these we know the value of. 
So y plus x is 4, xy is negative 2 times 3. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. We add 24 to both sides, and now we created a new piece. x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 88. Now we're just going to multiply these two expressions together. So x cubed plus y cubed times x squared plus y squared equals uh, 88 times 20. Okay, distributing x to the fifth plus x cubed y squared plus x squared y cubed plus y to the fifth equals 88 times 20. I don't recommend multiplying things like this unless you have to. You can usually find a shortcut. Um, then factor out the x squared y squared. x to the fifth plus x squared y squared times x plus y plus y to the fifth equals that expression. x squared y squared is still 4. x plus y is still 4. That's 16. Subtract 16 from both sides. Now, this is x to the fifth plus y to the fifth which we can place right here, and we're going to have 4 plus this expression, but it's divided by 4. I can put the 4 into the 88 to get 22 times 20, and into the 16 to get minus 4. Simply cancel these, 2 times 22 is 44, tack on the 0, the answer is 440. Okay, and on to the 2020 10A problem 15, the last problem of this set. A positive integer divisor of 12 factorial is chosen at random. Right away, we're going to need to know how many divisors 12 factorial has. We'll get to that. The probability that the divisor chosen is a perfect square can be expressed as whatever after that. Some expression. Find it. That's what you want to do, and then worry about the relatively prime stuff later. Okay, so uh, how many divisors does 12 factorial have? Um, we're going to need to know how many primes it has or the prime factorization of it. Um, the way that we do that is we're just going to take 12, and 12 factorial will have a number of factors of 2, where you can divide by 2 and round down. That gives you every even number. Plus, you can divide by 4 and round down. That gives you every multiple of 4, because it's going to contribute an additional power of 2. And then lastly, 12 divided by 8 rounded down. You don't need to do 12 divided by 16 because there are no factors of 16. The reason we're doing this is because 8 contributes an additional 2. Add this up and you start off with 2 to the 10th. Next you're going to do it for 3's. 12 divided by 3 rounded down is 4. Plus 12 divided by 9 rounded down because that's 3 squared. 9 is going to contribute an additional 3. Um, that's going to add 1, so you get 5, so it's 3 to the 5th. From here, you're not going to have any more perfect squares dividing, so 12 divided by 5 is 2. You'll have 2 powers of 5. Um, 12 divided by 7, uh, rounded down, is, is 2. Um, 12 divided by 7, rounded down, is only going to be 1, so there's 1 power of 7 and 1 power of 11. Uh, there are no higher powers. This is it. That's how quickly you can prime factor a factorial. Now once we're there, uh, we're going to use the trick where you, to count the total number of divisors, you simply add 1 to each of the exponents and multiply. So there are 11 times 6 times 3 times 2 times 2 um, total factors of this number. Now how do we know that? Because it's basically like um, the fundamental counting principle. This is an event where I'm choosing a power of 2, I choose a power of 3, and so on, and I can multiply different event results to get the total number of outcomes. So this has 11 uh, different choices I can make, all the way from 2 to the 0 to 2 to the 10th. From 0 to 10 is 11 choices. That's why there's 11 here. Okay, so... Uh, next up, we need to know how many, the probability that divisor is a perfect square. So we have to know how many perfect square divisors there are. Um, this tactic I picked up from uh, Sam Chen's AMC8 prep book. What you're going to do is you're going to group all the even powers together. And if it's not an even power like this one, take away one so it becomes an even power. So when I do that, it's 2 to the 10th times 3 to the 4th times 5 squared. These are all the even powers. These don't contribute. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to group them and factor out a 2 from the exponent. So you get 2 to the 5th times 3 squared times 5 to the 1st, and that is now squared. And because this is squared, everything inside that has a divisor will be a perfect square divisor. So I can just take each of these exponents and do the same thing we did over here. We're going to add 1, 6 times 3 times 2. That's how many perfect square divisors I have. Again, there's a reason you don't multiply things, because cancellation is nice. 1 over 22 is the answer, and it wants to know, are M and N relatively prime? They absolutely are. Um, what is M plus N? 1 plus 22 is 23.